Hello and welcome to Abby Tyler's Healthy Living. My name is Abby Tyler. I'm your host, a family nurse practitioner, a health and wellness blogger, and a community volunteer. And here we discuss evidence-based health information regarding mind, body, and soul with a holistic emphasis. Thanks for joining me on this journey of health and wellness. Please enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Abby Tyler's Healthy Living. My name is Abby, your Healthy Living MP. How are you guys doing? Oh, Paul as well. Today we'll be discussing six easy tips for taking medication safely. Okay, so uh, before I start that, let me just go into my banners here. And I will put my glasses on too. So, okay, so um, please um, share the show and also invite others too. This is a recorded version, okay? So my disclaimer is always, I am a provider, but I'm not your provider. So please do not make any changes to your regimen without checking with your own provider. With that being said, let's get into the show. Okay, so um, for those of us who administer medications um, in um, in the professional setting, okay, it's not just nurses that administer medication to other um, people do that. So there are five hallmarks that we have to follow when we do that. The right dose, the right medication, the right patient, the right route, and the right time. So basically, that's what we do in the professional setting. At home, this this I'm going to incorporate that into how you can take your medication safely when you're at home, whether it's you giving it to yourself, to a family member, uh, to um, elderly relative, and all that. Okay. So and also the other things that you can do to make sure that you're getting the right medication and all that. Alrighty. So again, share the show. Alrighty. So and I will be reading the comments later after the show and then I can um, also respond to it. Alrighty, so let's get right into the show there. So this really nice article. Okay, so um, number one, let's go in here. When you do go to your doctor's office, um, what do you see the nurse there or the doctor there? Well, if we prescribe you any medications, okay? We prescribe medication or what are we changing medications around, adding or taking away some medications and all. So it's important thing is to make sure you, when you at your doctor's office, you make sure you take notes. Okay. It's important that you take notes. I know you're, sometimes you're in there for only 15 to 20 minutes. If you're not getting like so many different medications, like you already know the medications you should be taking, but just in case if we're taking, like again, taking away some medications or adding something, you want to write some notes. The reason being is that if you write something, your own handwriting, you have, you're more likely to, rem to remember it and to know what you wrote yourself as supposed to if we wrote it for you. But even some doctor's office, do they have a summary of the, the record of your visit? So you can just go right in the portal, the doctor the patient's account on the computer or on the phone. And you can see everything that we did for you and then the medications that we prescribed. Okay, so write your note or add something to it. Ask the doctor why you're there. Okay, you ordered me this medication. You said aspirin 81 milligram. Um, I should take that every day. Um, am I supposed to be taking one tablet a day? Am I taking one time, one time a day, one, two times, two times a day? How am I supposed to be taking this medication? Okay, you tell me to take this medication three times a day. Am I taking it like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, or am I taking that to where I'm taking it with food or how many hours in between? I'm supposed to be taking these medications. So just kind of ask those questions. So when you do go over to the pharmacy, when you, and you can ask further questions for, for further clarification. Okay. So make sure you just write some notes down. And also you can always also ask how many medications are you prescribing for me? So just in case, if I go there and you tell me you're prescribing three medications and I go there and I only get two, I need to be able to ask those questions. And you can also call back to the doctor's office and say, I just need to have, I have another question before I go. All right. So just ask those questions while you're there and you can always call like I said, and plus when we send them, we'll send the prescription directly over to the pharmacist. Okay. So this, you're not going with any kind of paper prescription. Very rarely we give you paper prescription. Okay. So we send it directly to your pharmacist and then um, you can just go to, when you go to your pharmacy, you pick it up and you can ask questions too while you're there. Okay. So it's important that you just write it, just jot down certain notes that things that you, you, if you don't, if, so you don't forget. And also if you have family member with you, if somebody can go with you, especially for an elderly relative or somebody who's, you know, a young, young man, a woman who's kind of nervous and first getting integrated into the adult healthcare system to go with them. So you'll be able to ask those questions. Okay. And if you're at a doctor's office and you're asking questions and they don't seem receptive of all those questions, 
then, you know, you want to like maybe schedule another time to see if it won't be the best time to get there because I may have questions after a while. Sometimes too, you can say that before you make the appointment. So at least that way they would know when to schedule at the right time. Like they're not going to schedule, you know, like maybe 10 o'clock when we have so many other people waiting. Okay. You also deserve as much time you're supposed to get with the doctor when you're there. All right. So take notes um, when you're at a doctor's office. Number two. Tip number two, check the prescription at the pharmacy. Okay, so let me go in here. Um, so whether your medication has been delivered, especially if, it, if it's been delivered to, I think it's the way you can ask the company that delivers it. At the same time, too, if you go pick up your medication, there's a form there. As soon as you get there, the pharmacist might tell you, can you sign that? Before you sign that form, if you don't have any questions, you know, you make sure you want to ask more questions. If you have a medication, sometimes you see your medication is a different color. That means that either the doses were changed or it's a different manufacturer. You have a right to ask, why is my medication a different color now? Okay. Um, like things like blood thinners do when you change the doses around, the color changes too. Or sometimes, like I said, a different manufacturer. Or you open the medication and you say, okay, well, my doctor says I'm supposed to take this three times a day. And you said two times a day. I got my notes here. Um, is that clear enough? So make sure you ask those questions because when you sign that paper, yeah, you're signing that paper stating that you you don't have any questions or, and, and, and that's the reason why you signed the paper. So ask the questions. Try to not go there when it's like really busy. So that way you're not, you don't have a whole line behind you and people start getting a little upset that you're asking all of these questions. And also call your pharmacy and say, I'm bringing, I'm going to pick up my medications. I just want to make sure it won't be the best time in case if I have questions to ask. Okay. Most of the pharmacists, you may, I mean, we're all busy. But um, they will make time for you if they know that you're going to be coming there at a certain time to say the best that would tell you, give you a pretty good idea when the best time to come to ask those questions. All right. And sometimes you can talk to them on the phone, too. Sometimes it's hard to get them on the phone, but it's, you know, you can get them on. And also, if you have any questions, you can always call the doctor's office back. We have a special line to get to the pharmacist. It's not always right away, but we can get to them, too. And some of the pharmacists can just call us right away, too, if they have any questions, if they want to clarify anything. All right. So make sure the notes that you took, man, also Ask the pharmacist why you're there, okay? Now, number three is store your medication properly. Now, you may be saying, what do you mean store medication properly? When I bring my medication home, I, you know, I put it in the refrigerator or I put it in the, um, or I put it in the, the medicine cabinet in my bathroom. That's where I keep my medication. What's so different about that? Um, yes, you can put your medication in the refrigerator, but that's, that's only if your medication needs to be refrigerated. Okay. And how long can you take it out of the refrigerator? How long can it stay out of the refrigerator? Because let's say you're going somewhere or going to a trip you know, you have to keep it refrigerated. You, do you have a cooler or how cold does it have to be to keep your medication safe? If you go in like overseas trip or going, just going out of the, uh, out of the state, you're driving for a long distance and you have to stop somewhere to take your medicine. You want to ask, you know, all those things. Um, if you keep in the medications in the medication cabinet, in the bathroom, there are times when they tell you um, because people are taking a bath and with warm water and cold water, the temperature changes in the bathroom to can affect the quantity, the, the chemistry makeup of the medication too. So you want to ask, do I keep it in, the medica in my medication cabinet or I keep it in a separate cabinet that's not where, you know, just moisture and everything there. Okay. And sometimes some other medications too, you might think that, oh, this doesn't need to be refrigerated. So I can just put it anywhere. Ask the questions first. Okay. And also, you want to make sure that whatever you do, you keep it out of the reach of children, especially the pretty um, colors and all. They see that they get curious and they think they can, you know, just go ahead and take that. And so make sure you keep it out of reach of children. OK, so make sure you keeping that very safely to where it needs to be. And some other medications too, like again, like I said, um, so medications don't, you can, you can expose it to light. Okay. It has to be in, in the bottle that is, that is stays in. So you have to keep it in the bottle there until you absolutely need it. Those are medications that you take as needed, but some other medications, you know, you can't expose it to light until you, unless you have to use it. So make sure you ask all those questions when you go to the pharmacist. Okay. Alrighty. So, and also good is like keep that in the original containers, but there's some, you know, sometimes if you're taking care of an elderly relative or sometimes some people who are regular um, age to who want to keep that medication, they keep that in the container that says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like the dosage thing, you can do that too. But medications that you don't have to take every day, keep them separately from that. So that way you're just taking that. And sometimes it's hard to decide which medication once you open it up, but after a while you get used to it. You can, you know, you know which medications you're taking. Okay. So, but always have a complete list and a complete um, list of your medication. It should be the most current list of your medications, including any kind of um, herbal medications you take and also anything over the counter that you're taking too. So make sure you have that. I also spoke about the fact that you can put that in your secret app in your phone. 
Okay, a family member can have it too because you're not going to be walking around with paper, um, a list of and paper um, medications and all that. Because if you misplace that, then where are you going to be? Okay, so it's also good to have it in your phone. All I sometimes I do is say take a picture of it. You have the um, the code to your phone, so nobody's going to look into your phone, right? And have that, and make sure you keep you know you keep it updated too. If you have you have stopped taking the antibiotic, take it off the list. That's the reason why I say put it in your phone so you can just go ahead and delete it, delete that medication. If they change the medications around, always do that because when you you go into the doctor's office every time you get there we do a medication reconciliation to make sure you're taking the right medication the right dosage and all and if you have to go to the emergency room or go to any other doctor's office do any kind of specialist they want to have that information okay so make sure you do that all righty so number four is give the right dose now you're saying, well, yeah, of course I'm going to give the right dose. What are you talking about? And you say, oh, you know, they told me to take one tablespoon or they told me to take one teaspoon of this or take a little bit here and there, a little. And and what, what one tablespoon for me could be one tablespoon different for you. Okay. The, you know, the quality in the spoon or a spoon that look like a teaspoon can look like a tablespoon. And it's very important, especially for um, for little kids too, because we give them medication based on their body weights and also you don't want to underdose uh, somebody. You don't want to overdose them either. And that's, and also for elderly people too, medications affect them very differently. Okay. So it's important that if they tell you in the middle of those things would be like for um, pills and also um, liquid. So let's say if you can swallow pills and we give it to you in um, elixir form and sometimes some medications come in a liquid form too. So it's important. So you say, okay, well then what do I do then? Because I know one teaspoon, I may be giving a little bit more. I maybe, maybe you have to fill it up a little bit, but just as some of the things that you can do while you're here. So let me just show here. I'll go in here for a second. So. So actual pharmacy, then these, these devices, um, you can get them from your pharmacy and you can get them from like maybe Walmart, Walgreens, wherever it is that you shop. It's very cheap if you buy it from like places like Walmart or if you buy it from Amazon too, okay? So let me go in here and I'm gonna show you. Okay, so like I said, when they say one tablespoon, okay, so you say, you know, one tablespoon, I, one tablespoon could be one tablespoon or one big spoon. So these are some of the devices. These are like a, a little cup, you see the measuring thing over here. So once you put it, you put it in, you lift it up and you pour in there, you have the exact dosage in there. So you're not overdosing and you're not underdosing. Okay. So you can ask that in like a measuring spoon from your pharmacy and then um, they can, if they have that, it can give that to you. Okay. There's another one. Also, this one's like for babies, you know, what you have to put, cause you have to put the baby right in like under their tongue and all that. So you can do that already. And um, so you can put that there and then you just squeeze it in their mouth. There's, okay, so those are the things that you can do, like if it's that dosage, and let me go in your dosage cup for older people. And for that, see how the, the numbers are right on there? So you can basically, they tell you like one teaspoon, two teaspoons, and you say what it's like, but most on here is like one tablespoon or one teaspoon or cc's or milliliters. So ask that, ask for that too, okay? So your pharmacy can provide that for you. Okay, and want to make sure that you when you're using those things that you wash them and wash them after also if you're already make sure you wash them before and just put them on like put in a paper towel or you put in a plate for them to air dry. Make sure you're not sharing that in between people. Okay, if you have two children or you your husband or somebody other people living in the house do not share the same thing. Or else if you're washing it completely, not understanding because sometimes it can be expensive to be changing things around. That's why I say you buy if you buy in bulk like at on Amazon or maybe Walmart is cheap. Deeper, okay. So, but that's like, that would give you the exact dosage there. Okay. So also you're going to be asking when you're at the pharmacy. So you want to make sure, okay, do I, am I supposed to crush the medication? There are some medications that you cannot crush because uh, the way is, the way is uh, manufactured, sometimes the medication, there's certain medications, let's say pain medication or blood pressure medicine that is supposed to release into your system over a period of time. Because if we tell you take this medication every 12 hours, so that medication is releasing uh, over a period of time until the next dose. If you crush that medication, then all of that, you're getting all of that all at once, okay? That could like really drop your blood pressure and leave, and leave you in a really bad spot, all right? And also, and some other, and pain medication too, especially for elderly, for not only for elderly, for babies and all, but if the pain medication is supposed to work over time and you crush that, you're taking all that pain medication 
all at once. Okay, that just releases right into your bloodstream all at once. And that, because the pain medication also works on keeping you calm and it works with your brain to keep you calm and block your pain receptors. But if you do that in your body, that can also make you very sleepy, very, very lethargic and very weak and all. It can also stop your breathing. It can be that dangerous, okay? So it's that serious. So you want to make sure that you ask first, am I allowed to crush this medication? But my family member cannot swallow this. So can I take this, you know, then what am I supposed to do? So bring that to your doctor's attention too, saying I have a problem swallowing big pills or my mother's having problems or my, you know, with little kids, it's mostly going to be liquids anyway. So they can tell you, maybe you can take some medication, dip it in some applesauce and take it or, but it's some medications that you have to take all on its own. Okay. Because if you take it with food, the food kind of breaks down the chemicals from the pills, or if you, and you know, there's some medications you have to take, um, well, with food, because if you don't, you could have some, you could have some stomach upset and all that. So make sure you ask those, those are important questions that you're supposed to be asking. So if they tell you, okay, yes, you can crush it. All right. So if you're crushing it, sometimes it's like, okay, what am I supposed to crush it with? It? Do I do, do that, do this? So these are some of the um, devices. This is one crusher right here. There are many other ones on the market where you just put the pill right in the middle here and then you just kind of grind it. It's like you're grinding pepper. All right. Now that requires some dexterity to do some movement with the hand. So if that has, if you have a problem with that, there are other um, um, devices on the market too. So you can um, just ask for that. Okay. So th that's called the pill crusher. And like I said, there are other um, ones on the market that's much easier to use. Okay. So you can ask for that. And, and then to tell you, you can crush the medication Now crush it and put in the applesauce or crush it and put it in that. And then you can take that. All right. But make sure you ask those questions first, because you don't want to be taking something very powerful and then cause you, you know, end up in the emergency room, God forbid. All right. And also um, you say, okay, I need to spill, spill a um, pill. Let me get a little bit of water here. Excuse me. Okay. So I have to spill a um, <laughs> split a pill. So, um, and sometimes you say, okay, am I supposed to just bite it or am I supposed to, um, break it in half, but there's nothing there to make it, to break it in. Do I put a, um, a knife or something like that? This also, you can also ask for a pill splitter. This is one of the ones on the market here. Okay. So you see, you just put the pill right in there and you can break it in half. They tell you take half a pill. If they tell you take, um, you know, one quarter of a pill into four pieces and all that, you can just break that out. This is the blade over here. So you have to be very careful. Okay. And make sure if you have to break um, different, different pills and all that to rinse in between and wipe, be very careful with the blade in there again. All right. So don't go touching that and make sure you take that um, out of the reach of children and you can spoil your plate. So you can ask for the pill crusher or you can ask for um pill splitter if you need to do that. Again, you want to ask the right dosage too, because sometimes they'll say this medication, um, 75 milligrams, take half of that. So you'll be taking half of that pill. So you want to ask those questions too. Okay. And, um, and so there's, there's, there are other medications too. So to make sure you ask that for those things on the market. And like I said, you can get it from Amazon or you can get it from Walmart places like that, that, you know, sell things and, and any place that sells in, in bulk, like some regular um, pharmacy that sell devices too, you can go there and buy that. Okay. So let me go in here and one second. Alrighty. So the next one would be give the med give the medication through the right route. Now, of course, you'd be saying, well, of course, I know how to give the medication to the right route. And and um, so sometimes like the, the, your doctor may may put something in there and they use different they didn't use words that like originally in Latin and all. So it can be a little confusing sometimes. So it's it's important that I mean, if they it says, you know, especially with the eye drops and things like that, you want to make sure that it says both eyes and well, one eye and yeah. You know, all right. So it's important if they tell you the medication should be given by mouth, you take it by mouth, meaning you put it in your mouth and, and drink with water. If they tell you take it on your tongue, you lift up your tongue. It might say sublingual. You put that on your tongue and, and you know, you don't swallow it. You make sure it, it dissolves, especially for medication, like if you're having chest pain and things like that. If they want you to put it on, on your tongue. OK, and then suck on that. Don't go drink water with it either. OK, so make sure because it's supposed to dissolve on your tongue. If they're telling you uh, um, it's a patch, make sure you, you know, ask first. It's supposed to be clean the area a little bit, put the patch on there. And um, if you start having any rashes or itching and all that, bring that to the doctor's attention because he may be having an allergic reaction to that. Sometimes your body needs a little couple of days to get used to it too, okay? So it may not be necessarily an allergic reaction. Maybe um, maybe it's just something your body needs to get to. But if it's causing you a lot of, um, you know, problem, of course, bring it to their attention. Alrighty, and... Um, 
again, like I said, problem swallowing, make sure you ask first if you're supposed to crush that medication, put in some applesauce, or what are you supposed to do if you need to change that? You can also, when you're taking the medication, if they, the medication is ordered maybe three times a day and it doesn't work with your schedule, you can say, can that can, I, can you change that medication or can I make it in a way where I'm taking it because I have to go to work, I have to go to school, there's no way I'm going to be able to stop to be able to take that medication, okay? So make sure you bring that. And uh, I'm going to go in here and medication through, um, if you're having a suppository, meaning that little um, dose thing that you put up to your rectum, sometimes it's not comfortable, you know, oh my God, I don't want to do that. I don't want definitely don't want to do that to another person. So ask first, it, what, does it necessarily have to be suppository? Trust me, we don't prescribe that if we absolutely don't have to, but if it's one of the things that you have to do, make sure you ask how to do it. Washing your hands first, wearing gloves and doing that, washing your hands before and after and ask like how the patient's supposed to be positioned, how far up am I supposed to go? All those things are very important. Okay, so there are other medications too. Let me just go in here that you have to take um, your ear, your eye drops. Make sure you take that. You take your um, bottle, and um, you if they says shake first, make sure you shake. Okay, so the particles not in the bottom already. And then you, I always say, look up at the light. I said, put your eyelid down, look up at the light. So that way that automatically brings the eye up that way. And you just drop it in the lower part of your eye. That is conjunctiva part of your eye. Just go ahead and just drop it right there and squeeze your eyes in, okay? For little kids, you may have to turn their head this one side and put it in because it's very hard to give little kids eye drops. They don't like it at all. Alrighty, so you just put it inside and let them... It's, flows right into the eye and just on to blink the eyes for that to go and just you have to just comfort them before and after because it's not pleasant ear drops making sure again you put that in your ear go in there put in there make sure it's not touching anything you're not supposed to be putting anything else in your ear besides just cleaning it out if you use q-tip just on the outside of your ear do not put it in because you could puncture your eardrum or put something in your ear there or it could break in your ear so it's important that you do that if you have cotton swabs to so make sure you have that close by um, also for um, nose um, nasal spray to your nose drop, anything for the sinuses, I'm not endorsing anything here. This is one of the main ones that we use sometimes. Uh, this is called Flonase. We, people use that for allergies. They use that for um, asthma and all. Make sure that when you're putting that in, you put that directly into your nose all the way here and make sure it's pointing half, It's pointing all the way up because you have to get into your sinuses over here. If you just do it like this, that's just going to go right into your throat there and you'll be like, you know, sitting there and feeling the back of your throat and that's not pleasant. Okay. So make sure you put it all the way up, put it in and then you squeeze as you squeeze, you breathe in. Okay. And then you do the next one, you put it in, you squeeze, you squeeze in the bottle and you squeeze in. Okay. And um, make sure again, do not share that with anybody else. Your eye drops, your nose um, drops and all that nasal sprays. Do not share that with anybody else because anything around the eyes and the mouth and all that. That can also cause a problem because there's all the mucous memories that are nice and soft and germs can easily go in there. So your germs may not be bothering you, but it may bother somebody else. And you don't want to get some serious eye infection or something go up into your nasal cavity and all that. Okay, so please do not share that. Alrighty, and uh, let me just see in here. I talked about the patches and also it's honest. It's for patches also. You want to ask if you can if you can switch sides, if you you know where to put it, and um, and for other medications too, like pain pain patches, you you have to change it every three days. So making sure, and also you want to make sure that no nobody gets in, especially with the little kids and your elderly relative too, that they don't peel that off because that's medication that's supposed to be released over um, a seventy two hour period. So it can be very very deadly if in the, in the wrong hands okay so and if you're just joining us um of course this is a uh, way to uh, six tips to take your medication safely Alrighty, so and let's go back in here and for your last last tip would be um keep a medication log so this is mainly that if you go to the when you go to your doctor's office we give you medication to say take this as needed you want to keep a log on that if you if you especially like pain medication or you take an insulin and you seem to and we give you like a scale to say if you're if you're your blood sugar is between this and this, take this amount. If it's between this and this, take this amount. Usually like in the first couple of um, uh, months that we do that, we'll tell you, write, you know, write down your blood, blood sugar in the morning and in the evening or in the morning and right after meals and keep that in and see how much you're taking as needed and all that. And also even without not taking it as needed because sometimes that 
you know, when people have to go to work, they can't afford to be doing that and stopping to do that. So making sure you're keeping your blood sugar down because the dosage that we're going to prescribe for you, if we've seen that, we've seen you in the next two weeks or in the three, next three months, if the sugar are like way high or way low, we have to adjust the dosage and all. So it's important that you write it down, say, okay, write it down and write down the dates and all, okay? If anything change during that time, if you happen to be sick during that time too at all, you know, make sure you write it down because then we want to see if there would, how come this number, these numbers here were really low over here. Were you not eating during this time? What was going on that your numbers came out so low this time around? So make that. And also for blood pressure medicine too, if we tell you don't take the medication, if your blood pressure, let's say if it's less than 100 over 70, Make sure you write the number less than, okay? Don't write the um sign because some people get confused on that. And also for don't, don't you know, if it's greater than this, let us know. Kind of write it down because usually we'll say write it down for about a week or so. And then if you don't have to come in, you can just call it in and we can just have like a, you know, say, okay, continue taking the medication or we may have to see you to do that. Because sometimes when people come into the office, you know, white coat hypertension, meaning like you come into the office and you, somebody doctors, you know, doctors offer you get nervous and your blood pressure is high. So it may not be a true indication your blood pressure at you know overall so sometimes if we see that based on other things we might say go home and um right you know keep the log of it and then bring it back in okay so keep that on a separate notebook little little small notebook just jot it down somewhere don't mix it up with everything else okay so basically you do that and um and the most important thing is like i said take the medications um and, you know the way you're supposed to take it and also in conclusion, you know, most important thing, keep the keep out of reach of children, keep out of the reach of children, keep out of the reach of children. For children who know how to take their own medication, all that to make sure they're keeping it out of reach of their little little ones and all that. Okay, because some kids who like to take the asthma medicine or take other medications, they kind of know how to take their medications, but also you want to be checking on them too to make sure they are taking their medications. Okay, so and let me go in here. I think I covered everything. Um, also ask your pharmacy, where do I, my, my insulin needles. Okay. Or my, um, like other things that you take injectables, the, where do I dispose of them? Cause you don't want to be putting that in regular trash. There's no reason why the people who collect your garbage and all that should be exposed to any kind of needles and anything that could cause them in, in serious infectious disease. Okay. So ask them, do you, could I bring it back to the pharmacy? Is there a way to, places that you can dispose of it? Also, if we change your medications around, do I need to, um, where do I dispose of it? Because people used to sit there and just flush it in the toilet. Well, all of that is going right into the, to the you know, the water supply and all. So you don't want to be putting that kind of medication. And don't forget the little fishes in the sea too. So you don't want to do that. So ask your pharmacist and say, um, where can I put this already? And um, if you have any additional questions and all, you can always, again, like I said, the portal system where you can just look in there on your computer and we'll tell you, like, it's called MindChart. And depending on um, the company that you're with, you, they will tell you, you can go in there, you can write questions out, you can, people uh, people send me notes all the time, you know, the, 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 they will send it, the, the medical system kind of sorted out and then it comes to me or sometimes it comes directly to me and I may not respond right away, I'll respond later on in the day, okay? So if you ask a question, if it's really serious, call, don't just leave a message yet because sometimes there's certain things that, that are a priority and I will get to that before I get to the other one. Okay. So I hope everything I said has helped somebody. If you like this show, please give me a thumbs up. I'm just going to go a quick review again and you can go back and watch the show. First thing, take notes um, at your doctor's office. So you remember when you, so you don't forget or also like, you know, important things and little important points to jot down. Number two, you want to check the prescription in the pharmacy. Make sure you're doing that before you sign that form that they tell you that you, you know, sign here first. So make sure you ask any questions before signing that. And um, store the medication properly, like I said, in the medication cabinet, uh, in the refrigerator, ask where it's supposed to be. And um, give the right dose. I give you all those little um, pictures of devices that you can ask while you're at the pharmacy. Okay. And also, like, again, like I said, you can get that over at Walmart or Amazon or wherever they sell something that's in bulk. So you can use that and make sure you make sure you keep that clean, wash it and then make it air dry. Do not share it. All right. And also eye drops and nose drops and all that. Do not share it. Do not share it. Husband and wife, siblings, do not share it. Okay. When you're doing eye drops, make sure the, eye, the tip of the eye stuff is not touching your eyes so you don't get infected. All right. And um, give the medication through the right route. I did tell you how to do that. And um, keep a medication log in case for like diabetes and other stuff. And you're welcome to always ask the questions when you call your doctor's um, office again. If you have any additional questions, you can go ahead and do that. So I hope this has been helpful for you or somebody else already. And, um, and I will be back next week. 
on Tuesday for another episode. Um, I also, um, like I said, I also do daily shows during the week, maybe two to three um, Abby's daily dose in, in between there to give you some helpful information. So if you're not a, a member of Abby Tyler's Healthy Living, please consider joining. Please inviting, please invite your friends and share the show, share the show, share the show. Okay, so I will talk to you guys later next week and I wish you all a beautiful week. And you stay here. Enjoy the nice weather. If it's nice, your name, your neck of the woods. All right. So good night. And um, see you guys next week or do my Abby's Daily Dose. Okay. Please don't forget to invite your friends so they can all be members of Abby Tyler's Healthy Living page. Abby Tyler's Healthy Living page. Okay. Because that's the public page there. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Please let's continue the conversation in the, in the comment section. Okay. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them when I get to it. All right. Good night. Let me put that there and um, take care. Bye-bye now.